You couldn't buy that for $1,500 if you just found it in the ground rusted. I'm absolutely fine keeping them or I can trade them with other people that actually know what they're talking about. Like and subscribe right now or the spider will fall on your face in your sleep. Running a pawn shop can be very successful when you know the business in and out, but once in a while you're bound to lose money. Being a good pawnster means you know how to mitigate these losses and doesn't eat into you too much, but even then you might find yourself dealing with customers that make you unbelievably angry. While one can say that human nature is weird considering that dealing with angry customers in pawn shops can be quite interesting, it's still worth watching because you can always learn a thing or two about human nature. Anyways, every once in a while pawn deals go sour, which leads to angry customers and just bad business, so we went through the trouble of compiling the top 10 pawn stars angry customer situations online. Welcome to Trend Mix, where we get in the mix and talk about all things involving pawn shops and pawn stars. Believe me, these videos are worth the time and you'll probably want more when we're done. So quickly hit the like and subscribe button and let's go! 1958 Seaflight Glastron Boat Here's a customer who walked into a pawn shop to sell his vintage 1958 Seaflight Glastron Boat for $10,500. At the time the car was made, it was sold in the range of $1,200 to $2,000. The boat was designed to look like a 1957 Chevrolet. The customer seems bankrupt and then the buyer declined his request, which sparks a little anger. Really? Okay. All right. That's fine. Well, thanks for bringing it in though, man. <sighs> he was basically insulting me with the, the, the paint thing, the petty stuff, you know? That's a good looking boat. This guy doesn't know Two rotating barrel rifles. So a man who goes by the name Mike brings two hunting rifles to the pawn store hoping to leave the place with $4,000 for both guns. Soon Inspector Rick gets a look at it and oops, the deal is not happening because many of the original parts were changed. This almost drove the seller to the boiling point, but he had to let it go. Same appraisal guy. Sometimes I'd like to smack him, but that's just me. 1955 contract signed by Elvis Presley. Not that I'm insinuating anything, but I feel like the woman who brought this to the pawn shop must have been one of the ladies who had a crush on the musician. Anyways, her estimation of the Elvis signed contract wasn't going to fly by with the Pawn Star guys. She wanted eight to ten thousand dollars for the paperwork. Well, I'd like to get eight to ten thousand dollars for it. That might be a reasonable figure. But when she was told that it was fake, she was very disappointed. That's a copy. Machine copy, Xerox machine. It's not original ink. Led Zeppelin album and autograph. Music is food for the soul, but then how much satisfaction can an old album cover and a band signature mean to a pawn shop? Well, the person who wanted to pawn this stuff wanted $22,000, and well, that would hardly have gone fine, right? How much do you want for this? 22000 as far as Led Zeppelin collectors go, this is the holy grail to Led Zeppelin items. Well, the seller was quite pissed when he was told that the cover was only worth about 8,000 bucks. I would give you eight grand for it. I, sorry, we're, you know, again, miles apart. Wells Fargo Strongbox, Chain, Ball, and Handcuffs. So Rake from the pawn shop is known to regularly call on experts to confirm the authenticity of things people brought in. However, once in a while he decides to go with his guts and Wells Fargo Strongbox I don't have good news for you. This is a complete fantasy piece. It's a complete fake. Had a tag that was fake and Rick spotted it to the annoyance of the customer. Yeah. It's a well-made box, there's no question about yeah, that. But, but it ain't a $450 box. I thought it was fake to start with. Statue of Perseus and Pegasus. Naturally, statues of this caliber are expensive artifacts because of their history and origins, but then it needs to be original to be worth a dime, right? In fact, it is believed that only 800 copies of that particular piece was ever made. The seller believed that it was worth $29,000. Look right. There's some pity right here. 
And that crack right there is from when they casted it. It didn't happen later. But on close examination, it turned out to be fake. Uh, to be honest, I don't know how to respond. I believe this was recast probably like 40, 50 years ago. And to put it lightly, the customer was not pleased. Hudson Bay Gorget. The seller here is a guy named Chris, and when he was told that the property he wanted to sell was not original, he really had a hard time controlling himself. It was quite a meltdown. He brought an artifact that was made to protect the throat and asked for $100,000, but then it was never meant to be. Uh, for about 100000 You know, I don't see that happening. A rare frame photo of Abraham Lincoln and wife. The thing is, it's likely to gonna turn out nasty when you dash the dreams and beliefs of people regarding something they've cherished for a good part of their lives. Now the person who wanted to pawn the frame was asking for about a million dollars and when he was turned down, things got very nasty. They'll be coming to me in 10 years. I'm t honest to God. I know, you think this is worth a million dollars and no, you, you would like it to be worth a million dollars. Medieval Polaxes. So here comes a man who loves to collect medieval weapons. So he bought a couple of medieval Polaxes which refer to Warhammers and wanted to get a total of $15,000 for them. Long story short, this wasn't going to happen for a guy who's already interested in weapons. You know, he ain't leaving without a fight. Uh, no. They're worth a lot more than that. If you think you can find these on the internet for $1,500, knock yourself out, because it's not going to happen. Charles Lindbergh Briefcase. Charles Lindbergh is considered as one of the greatest aviators of all time, and having his actual briefcase has got to be very valuable. And so the seller wanted a whopping $85,000 for it, and guess what? He was not going to get it. The result? A man who went from jovial to sad to angry. I still believe it belongs to Charles Augustus Lindbergh, the pilot. And you have the right to your belief, right. but what I found on it, it was Charles August. So that's it folks, not everyone gets to leave the pawn shop happy, especially if you brought in a fake artifact or overpriced things. I will be looking forward to your remarks in the comment section, subscribe if you haven't by now and please make sure to hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. See you guys in the next one.